In this episode of Crushed Custard, Tommy Bolin box sets. Good evening, welcome to Crushed Custard, the start of a new series today, something a little bit different, but before we go into that, I'd like to say thanks to everybody for watching the vinyl tag the other week. Lots of new potential custodites, commenters and subscribers, so thanks very much for that. It's good to have you all on board, as well as all the people who've been here for a while as well. So what are we going to be doing today? Well, we're going to start with something which is going to be called Box Clever. Now, during the last few weeks, we are watching a few videos that people have been putting on end of the year things. I've noticed a lot of people have been putting up their favourite box sets of 2023 and all that sort of stuff. And it got to me thinking, well, some of these people have got like 10, 20, 30, even more box sets in a year. And I'm thinking, well, I don't think I've got that many box sets altogether. Then you start looking and you realise you've got you've got more than you think. And they do seem to be becoming quite a big thing, don't they? These days, box sets, these like career retrospective things, an ideal way to get a whole load of albums on a particular art store at once. Some of them are exceptionally good value, maybe some of the others are a little bit overpriced, but it depends who they're aimed at, whatever I suppose. So I thought what we'd do is every now and again, not every every week, but every now and again, I'll just take a look at what box sets I've got by particular artists and I thought I'd start off today with probably the oldest box that I've got, the one I've had the longest, um, and then into another one by the same artist. So you'll know, notice from the title that the artist today is Tommy Bolin, a former guitar player with Deep Purple and James Gang Zephyr and all sorts of other stuff. And we've got two box sets. The first one we've got is this one from 1989. And this one is called Tommy Bowling the Ultimate. Now, this is a very interesting box. It's came out in 1989, this, but it only came out in Germany and America. It didn't come out anywhere else at all. I don't know why, but it didn't. It's it's a nice little package because it's a bit of a it's a bit of a career run through. It starts off with some Zephyr stuff and it goes right through to a track from his final. So I mean, it came out on three LPs or two CDs, so it's quite early on in the sort of CD world, wasn't it? Um, this one that I've got here is the CD version I've just got to hand at the moment. You can see it's got a nice little box together. There, there's a back on it, there you can see. The price ticket that I paid for it, £23.99 back in 1989 or whatever it was, I thought it would have been a little bit after that, so I don't think I went over to see these until 1991, so it was probably then I bought it. So what's he got on it? Well, starts off with some Zephyr stuff, sail on, cross the river, see more people come together, show busy. Then it goes on to the James Gang, and it's got a Lexus, which is, of course is the track that Tommy sang on the Bang album. It's also got Standing in the Rain on that one. Then it's got Spanish Lover and Do It from the Miami album. Then we get the track Quadrant 4 from the Billy Cobb album Spectrum, which was, of course, the thing that got him the Deep Purple gig in the first place. And then after that, we've got a couple of Moxie tracks which he played on Train and Time to Move On. We get a couple of tracks from the Alphonse Blues album Mind Transplant, which is, is great because that's a very, very difficult album to get hold of these days. Golden Rainbows and nitroglycerin. Then we go into the purple stuff with getting tighter, O to G, keep on moving. Live version of Wild Dogs as well, which Deep Purple let Tommy sing. And then we got a couple of tracks from Teaser, Dreamer, and People, People. Oh, and Teaser's got well, three from that album. Plus Sweet Burgundy from the final album, Private Eyes and Shake the Devil. And then right at the end is a little bonus track, which is called brother brother and that basically is an early run through of people people it's a lovely little set and not only that it's got a lovely book in it as well which i'll get out and show you there you go there's a front cover of the book there and 
pictures of Tommy when he was a baby, going all the way through to all sorts of great photos and things. There's a decent essay in there as well. And then suddenly a picture of the grave at the back. And then a picture of Tommy looking cool on the back. So that was a great little box set from 1989. The ultimate Tommy Bowling that covered his entire career. And if you can get on a copy of this now, it's pretty hard to get on. If you can get one, it's well worth getting hold of. If you are enjoying this video, please consider pressing the subscribe button. It's totally free. Okay, to the second Tommy Bowling box set it was from 2015. And that was that was this one. This is called Teaser 40th Anniversary. Now it's, it classes itself as the Teaser 40th Anniversary Vinyl Edition box set. Now I've got a couple of issues with that first of all. Let's get let's get them out of the way before we go on to the actual music on it. Anybody who saw this in the rap might think, well yeah, that's teaser, that's a great album. I really like that album. I'd like to buy that with some added bonus things on, some extended stuff, some tracks that weren't on there or whatever, and all that sort of stuff. That's not what's in the box. The actual album teaser isn't in isn't in this at all. The original album teaser is not included. What is included is a different version of every single one of the songs, plus a load of extra tracks as well. And they're all extended and in jam form. And it is fantastic. There's three LPs worth of stuff in here. And if we just go through it briefly, you will see what I mean about all the tracks being covered. So there you go. There's LP number one. LP number one has got teaser which opens it off, a 5 minute and 21 minute version of Teaser, followed by a track called Flying Fingers, which is a great jam, which lasts for 16 minutes, and anybody who's only ever heard Tommy Burling from Deep Purple or from the James Gang, what you would find out from listening to this is that you can be listening to so many different types of music in the space of one album. And what you'll be thinking you're listening to a jazz album at some points. You'll be thinking you're listening to some sort of fusion album at another point. You'll be thinking you're listening to sort of prog, psychedelic, whatever. Later on, you'll even be thinking you've got a little bit of reggae thrown in there, a bit of soul and all sorts of stuff. It's great the way that they've allowed these sort of long jams to be put out as they were. And they're not just widdly diddly noodling and all that sort of stuff but they keep stopping and starting they're proper pieces of music where they play all the way through and they are really really if you're a Tommy Bowling fan you cannot afford to be without this so side A you've got Teaser and you've got a 16 minute track called Flying Fingers then on side B you have got a 14 minute version of Wild Dogs now you imagine how good that is plus then you've got a new track called Cuckoo which lasts for 6 minutes so you get the idea about what you're sort of getting now. You move on then to LP2, which is this one. And on this one, you start off with a seven and a half minute track called Chameleon. Then you get an 11 and a half minute version of Lotus. Fantastic stuff. On the side D, you get a five and a half minute version of The Grind and then a five minute version of a track called Craze Fandango, which has been released on some of those outtake albums. Quite a few of these other tracks in various forms are around in other places as well. But it's, it's I mean, it's just a complete Tommy Bowling fest. This, you play all these three albums one after the other, you just, well, it's fantastic. Then you go to LP3. You see LP3 there, and on LP3, you get a six minute version of People People, a six minute version of a track called Smooth Fandango, you then get a six and a half minute version of Marching Powder, and then on the final side, side F, you get a three minute 58 minute version of Homewood's Truck that starts off with a really funky sort of intro, which is really great. Then you get another, a different version of Dream of five minutes and 14 seconds worth. This is quite different to the one on the actual album, uh, it's probably worth buying just for that. You then get a three minute 24 second version of Savannah Woman, which is really sort of jazzy and stuff. And then you finish it all off with a track called Oriental Sky, which probably guess what that's all about. 11 and a half minutes 
that one as well. So there's a lot of Tommy bowling guitar on this. This is absolutely brilliant. It also came as well with a booklet. The booklet on this one, not quite so good as the booklet on the ultimate one. I think there's a, an essay written by somebody called John Hurt that fills in one or two bits and pieces for people that might not know. It's all pretty mainstream sort of stuff. Not so many pictures on this one either. Um, and it also comes with two CDs, which is a sort of a best of life. All of that stuff is, is out on those Tommy Bowling archive stuff. Um, why they've put that in, I'm not 100% sure. So that's Tommy Bowling teaser 40th anniversary edition. Now, this album, of course, came out in 1975. So next year is going to be the 50th anniversary. Now, what I would like them to do is do this again, but get it right. In my opinion, what you want, you want the three albums from that set that I've just shown you, as they are. But you also want the original album in there, and maybe you want a remastered or a remixed version of the album as well, which would be five LPs in a box. Now, that's not excessive. I don't think that'll be too expensive. I think that would be really nice. And that's what people would want, I think. I think it's important to have the actual final album in there as well, so you can see and, and, and sort of compare what was being laid down in the recording studio, what was going on, and what actually came out on, on, the, on the album as well. I, I, it just would make it a much better set to me. The other thing that I've got a major issue with, and I'm not the only person who's got a major issue with this, and it pains me, it really does, pains me to have to show it you again. This cover, who on earth allowed this to happen? I mean, that is the most hideous picture of Tommy Bowen you've ever seen in your life. What is it supposed to depict? I mean, take a look at that picture on the wall. I'll tell you about that one in a minute. But look at this. I mean, you've got all these horrible... I thought it might have been like his hair across his face and stuff. But it's not. It's all these horrible sort of lines. And then they're all over his fingers as well. And this great big fat cigar in there. It's, it's an awful, an awful picture. And whoever decided to put that on the front of this when that was on the front of the original album goodness only knows now back to this picture i've got on the wall i really i've stood here for a reason i don't normally stand here but this is where i've got my tommy Berlin drawing now this is a charcoal charcoal portrait of the cover of teaser and every time anybody sees it and i will have all right in quite a few hours that will have been over the years and every time anybody sees it they all go this is mostly women of course who is that beautiful man i want to know who it is and then some herbert for want of a better word decided to put a picture like that on the 40th anniversary cover i just do not get it at all even the internal of course they're all black these images are sort of quite ghostly it's it's, it's a very macabre looking package set of packaging and, and i actually do know some people who have taken the records out of the box put them in a sort of a plastic cover and thrown the box away and people are we're never going to sell it so they're not worried about the uh, the monetary value i also know other people who've actually stuck the original, a copy of the original cover over the top to cover this up. It's, it really is an unpleasant cover. I don't know why it was done, but it's silly. And I've sort of said it ended up there, standing there, talking almost as much about the bad cover as I have about the record. But anyway, if you're a Tommy Bowling fan, it's well worth having. Just keep the cover face down like that or file it away. Don't have it on the show. Um, but yeah, some great jams on there, extended versions of some of the songs. Really, really good. And I hope that next year for the 50th anniversary, they sort of put it right and we get that rather than that. 
We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please consider pressing the like and subscribe buttons as it helps the channel to grow. See you soon. Thank you.